Hello friends, I'm Joanna from Joanna Miranda Studio, and this is my video series, Art Bag Time-Saving Tips and Tricks. Do you like the idea of illustrating in fountain pen and then coloring your illustration uh, with watercolor, for example, like this, but you're not really sure what kind of fountain pen ink to use? In today's video, I'm gonna talk about two different fountain pens, uh, excuse me, fountain pen inks, and those two inks are the Noodler's ink and the Diatramenta's document ink. And I'm going to explain the difference that I have found and why I prefer one over the other. Now, before I get started, let me just insert a word of caution. Fountain pens are designed to be used with fountain pen ink. You should never use permanent inks, for example, like India ink, this is Higgins India ink, you should never use this inside a fountain pen because it will dry inside the pen and has the potential to ruin your pen. I happen to have a very expensive um, vintage Carter's fountain pen and I have never tried using anything except the approved fountain pen ink inside this pen because it's an old pen and if I were to try even the Diatramentus or the Noodler's ink that I'm going to talk about today inside this pen and potentially ruin the pen, I would be really upset because this was an expensive pen. That said, the pen that I most often use these days for fountain pen ink drawings is my Noodler's Ahab Flex fountain pen. And this pen cost me all of $23. So not that I want to ruin it, I'm not going to throw out money needlessly, but I figure that it's better to experiment with a pen like this that's relatively cheap so that if something does happen to it, I'm not going to be heartbroken. For my demonstration of the differences between the Noodler's ink and the Diatramentus document ink, I have a whole bunch of papers. I've got watercolor paper, um, marker bleed-proof paper, all-purpose paper, mixed-media all-purpose paper, and actually also some Bristol board. So as you can see, I have little swatches of these papers all set to go. I've got the two inks here, the Noodlers and the Diatramentus document ink. This is actually gray, which is almost black. And I have two dip pens. Now the reason why I'm using these dip pens, one of them, this one will be, the one with the blue will be for the Noodlers. This will be for the Diatramentus. The reason why I'm using dip pens instead of fountain pens is simply because I don't want to have to fill fountain pens and then rinse them and clean them. So I'm using the dip pens, but as you'll see when I'm working with these, there's also a reason why I prefer to use fountain pens, um, and I think you'll see as I start working. I also have a piece of paper towel um, to drip, uh, clean off any drips. So let's start with the noodlers, and I'm just going to um, write something on each piece of paper using the dip pen. Okay, so let's start with the Bristol board and I'll just do an N, bunch of lines, do the same thing on the mixed media. Oops, I'm missing a D there. Mixed media, do an N. Now, right here, um, there's some railroading, what's called railroading. And I'm going to move on to the watercolor paper. Uh, here's another different kind of watercolor paper that I have. And again, railroading. I have to keep on dipping, which is one of the reasons why I prefer a fountain pen. Um, fountain pens can also railroad, but you don't have to dip quite as many times. So, and here's the bleed-proof paper, the Borden and Riley bleed-proof. Okay, I'm going to cap up my noodlers ink so that I don't spill it on the floor and create a disaster. And now I'm using, let me show you before I uncap it, the Diatramentus document ink for the next test. I have a different dip pen designated for that ink. So Bristol board, I'm going to put a D, mixed media, same thing, D, so I can keep them. Um, watercolor paper. And for some reason, it seems like either this nib or the ink um, seems to stay with the pen a little. Oops, this should be a D. 
Hmm. Sorry about that. Seems to stay with the pen a little bit longer. So maybe the ink has a little bit better flow. Not quite sure. Okay, so continuing on with the next part of my experiment, I'm going to use a water brush pen, which is just filled with water, clear water. And these inks have had a little bit of time to dry already, so I'm just going to go back and put a little blob of water on each to see what happens. Okay. Now already you can see a little bit more um, on the Bristol board, there's already some bleeding. Uh, here you can see it even more. Let me clean off the brush so I'm not transferring. Um, let's try on the D. Okay, so the mixed media paper seems to do better with the Diotramentus ink than with the noodlers. Bristol board, maybe it's about the same, but this does look a little darker. Let's try the watercolor paper. Okay, so watercolor paper definitely is beginning to bleed with the, the noodler's ink. With Diotramentus, it's not bleeding. Let's try this watercolor paper. Um, that might be a little bit better, but even so, it seems like there's still a little bit more pigmentation here. And the Borden and Riley, let's try this. That might be okay. But again, almost no bleeding from the diatrementus. So I think you can see for most of the papers, the diatrementus, I mean, the, the paper is actually wet, so it is showing a little bit of um, pigmentation. But here, this watercolor paper does much better with the diatrementus. Um, the Borden and Riley bleed proof paper does much better. It doesn't bleed with the diatramentous ink. The mixed media also does better with the diatramentous. Bristol board might be about the same, but I still think this might bleed a little more. Let's see, I'm kind of going back over. So that's the reason why I prefer to use the diatramentous ink. Now, of course, if you want to make sure that there's no bleeding at all, go ahead and use the Higgins ink but only use it with dip pens like these. Don't put the Higgins into your fountain pen. And again, if you don't mind having to constantly be dipping, you know, your, your pen, not uh, your dip pen into ink, that's, that's fine. Um, then you don't need to use a fountain pen. But if you want the ink to be pretty much free flowing whenever you're drawing and not having to keep on dipping, um, I would go ahead and, and use a fountain pen with one of with the diatramentous ink which comes in a great range of colors and i think you'll be happier if you use that because then this won't happen you won't have bleeding all of a sudden in the middle of your illustration which is very upsetting when you've taken time to do a beautiful illustration and then this happens or that happens so now you know why i prefer the diatramentous document inks for my illustrations and that's a wrap on today's art bag time-saving tips and tricks video. I post these videos every Monday and Friday. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and I hope you come back soon to see what I put up next. Thanks so much for watching.